Hello and welcome to my channel The Way You What It Is Truth. Remember to like and subscribe and comment down below. Now I'm going to talk about a very interesting topic today and it's about how Jesus was always the friend of sinners. In other words, to put it in a nutshell, he did not come to save the righteous or those who see themselves as being righteous, as in self-righteous people. He, didn't, he did not come to save those people. He was always the friend of the sinner. He was the friend of the atheists, the agnostics, the nature worshippers, the drunkards, the prostitutes, you know. So I'm going to start reading from Matthew 9, Jesus heals a paralytic and read all the way through to the end of the calling of Matthew. And then afterwards I'll add my own input, okay? So Matthew 9, Jesus heals a paralytic. Jesus stepped into a boat, crossed over and came to his own town. Some men brought to him a paralytic lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son. Your sins are forgiven. At this, some of the teachers of the law said to themselves, This fellow is blaspheming. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and walk, but so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, get up, take your mat and go home. And the man got up and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were filled with awe and they praised God who had given such authority to men. And now we're on to the calling of Matthew. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. How brilliant is that? And it's just common sense, but these people just could not see that. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. That was the Lord Jesus Christ's way of saying, you lot see yourselves as being righteous, but I'd rather be the friend of these sinners. Now, ever since the fall of Adam and Eve, uh, the first man and woman, uh, we, we have all been sinners to one extent or, 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 or another. Some people are more sinful than others. Some people are further away from God than others. Some people are more wicked than others. Some people are more righteous than others. But nonetheless, when Jesus died on that cross, he died for the least of the sinners to, to the worst of the sinners. And that's the way it is. And uh, he did not come to earth to save those who are righteous in their own eyes. And you best believe that God loves you. He loves whoever's watching this video. He loves me. He loves everybody. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Call on his name and you shall have eternal life. And that's how it is. So it's a very simple message, really. He was calling out the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. And let me just read that part again. The calling of Matthew. Now I'm going to get to the part where it says, uh, well, well, to be specific, Matthew 9, verse 11. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? As if to say, if he's so righteous, why doesn't he hang around with us, you know, or, or people who he sees as being righteous rather than corrupting himself with sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. That's what Jesus Christ was all about, and it's what made him so amazing and so incredible. 
is that he would rather sit at a table with prostitutes, tax collectors, drunkards, and so on and so forth, rather than with people who saw themselves as righteous in their own eyes. Now, just think on this. Think about how, how incredible that is. Think about all the drug addicts in this world. Think about all of the alcoholics. Think about all those who who live ungodly lives. Think about all the greedy, materialistic people. Think about all of the people that obsess about having a certain car in order to impress the world. Think about people that are full of vanity. He loves all these people. He loves everybody because he can see through it. He can see through our sinful pride and our vanity, our lust, the pride of life, lust of the eyes and lust of the flesh. Those who have just decided that um, that our bodies are, are, are our own and that if we want to engage in sexual intercourse with whoever it may be, whether it's for a bit of fun or whatever, then we're allowed to do it because we are our own people. But what the Bible te teaches is that he died for our sins and that we belong to him. No one belongs to themselves. And that's where sinful pride comes into it. You see, God's here saying, I'm the friend of sinners. I die for, for the sins of mankind. I did not come to save the righteous, the those who call themselves righteous, but those who realise they are sinners. That's the core of the message. And we're down here. But whilst we're down here living our little lives, doing whatever we want to do, often we're so full of sinful pride, we don't like to refer to the Bible. And you want to know why that is? It's because the Bible represents absolute truth. It, 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 it represents an authority, an absolute power, an absolute truth above us. And people hate that. The vast majority of people don't want to know. And, uh, yeah, anyway, I don't want to get too far off topic, but um, all God wants is for us to be humble, right? Uh, and, yeah, uh, this has given me a great idea for another video, actually, which I'll probably do immediately after I've finished this one, because something's been on my mind recently, and uh, I'd like to pick up a very, very good point about something. I'm not going to reveal what it is yet, but uh, it's going to be in the next video that I'm going to do. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be quite a short vid. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And, uh, yeah, I just thought it'd be neat to point out that the Lord Jesus Christ prefers those who live sin sinful, filthy lifestyles, whether it's alcohol, drugs, sexual immorality. But as long as they realise that they need Jesus as their Lord and Saviour, that they actually listen to him, you see, that's what he wants us to do. He doesn't want a load of self-righteous hypocrites. He did not come to say, well, in fact, he came to save everybody, even those who say they're righteous in their own eyes. As long as they repent of their self-righteousness and their smugness and their sanctimonious ways, then he will save them as well. He saves everybody from the most proud and haughty and arrogant and vain people to the most wicked of people to, to the most humble, the most lowly, the most broken of people. But you know what? Sometimes he has to break people down. So many people have ended up becoming saved in Christ in a hospital bed because that's what it took to bring them love. And the biggest problem, you best believe the biggest problem God has when it comes to mankind is pride. Sinful pride. People like to think that we can figure it all out ourselves, that, 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 that the Bible doesn't have all the answers. In fact, many people may think, well, yeah, the Bible is a book of wisdom. But ultimately, it's a man-written, man-made book of wisdom, which we can pick and choose what, what, what we want to take out of it. But no, God and the Lord Jesus Christ teaches and says over and over again, this is the absolute truth. This is the written word of God. Anyway, I'll leave it there. I hope and pray that you're all well. Remember to like and subscribe. And I thank you so, so much for tuning in. Okay, See you on, see you on the next one. Bye-bye and take care.